this is when you actually met the real skiz for the first time. So listen to this. Uh, Lucas is in the, the king's thingy. There's no Lucas around here. Is it joke? Yeah, he's up in the in the king's office. Oh jeez. Yeah, I bet he is trying to get that promotion. <laughs> where, are you, where are you guys? Where are you guys? Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. Here we are, episode 39. We're kicking it off, and we we're wearing something a little bit different this time. We yeah. Big yep. ol'. Our uh, head cans. Yeah. No, it's, it's, <laughs> and I, I like, and we wanted to do this to begin with, and then we kind of moved away. And, yeah. But we're not doing it just for the sake of adding uh, more technology. We're doing it because we have, in the mix... Remotely, Scar, good times with Scar on the screen here, and we are pumped. Welcome, Scar. Oh, this is awesome. I'm super excited to see you guys. Oh, dude, Th this dude. is uh, this is gonna be fantastic. I I've been an avid fan of the show. I love what you guys are doing, so being oh part gosh. of it is a great honor. So thank you. Thank you. It is so good to have you. You are our first virtual guest, yep. so uh, we're playing with new technologies, and hopefully it goes well. But uh, yeah, dude, thank you so much for joining the podcast. We are absolutely excited to have you. And uh, we have a private little thing with uh, our Glimpse supporters, and we may have told them you were coming, and they got super excited. So uh, this is this is going to be great. I think the listeners are going to really love this. So uh, yeah, we got we got questions got for question, you that yeah. they submitted. We got questions of our own. Uh, hope so. I hope you're ready. I'm excited. I want. I kind of want to kick off not not necessarily with a question, but just with sort of the, the energy I'm feeling right now. So this is this podcast is something that Impulse and I are very clearly proud of. We like doing this. And mm -hmm. and uh, and then to hear, because, so Scar, you reached out to me privately in Discord to talk about how much you were enjoying the podcast. Yeah. That, and that, and I, you know, I, I hold you in very high regard. And so in that moment, I was very like, I, I don't know what the, what the, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even find it. It's not, it wasn't like a humbling moment. It was like- Yeah, that was the word I was going to say, humbled, but- Super humbled, but more like, Oh, because you weren't just like, hey, you guys are doing a podcast. Good job. You had very kind things to say about it. And it got me into a space in my head where I was like, you know what? I'm actually to I'm, I'm, I'm starting to have a good effect on people whom I put on a pedestal. So <laughs> this is just neat. Maybe it's that it was it was a mixture of humble and neat. Your head wouldn't fit out the door. After it was that one. it was <laughs> I, I, it was I was I was numble. It was neat and humble at the same time. So uh, let me ask you, did, what, I don't know how many of the podcasts you've seen, but did you happen to catch the Minecon one? Yes. Okay. So I, I caught a, a, I caught one or two before that, and then the Minecon one, and I've been hooked ever since. Nice. And oh, I love the Minecon one because it brought back so many memories because, you know, I, I was there too, so I could kind of see from your guys' perspective on things that I missed out on, and it... it brought back so many memories that i mean be honest after that we went into the hermitcraft meeting we're like we need to make something like this at some point right like, that's that's yeah. how, that's how much it like affected me to make it a meeting topic that we need to do something if mojang is never going to do a minecon again or if they will or not we need to do something at some point yeah we we miss being able to hang out with each other in person and just like bringing that all back up definitely led to that nostalgia and, and made us realize like now that the pandemic is is you know winding down and mm -hmm. things are safer now to get back together in person, we yeah. should do something, even if we have to make it happen on our own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Scar brought that to the to the hermit meeting, and we were like, yeah, let's start looking into something like that. Obviously, there's a lot that would need to take place to make that happen, but hey, wheels are in motion, so who knows? Maybe maybe yeah. something could happen there. Yeah, there's a magic of one being in the same room as people. You know, we're doing all this stuff together virtually, but being in the same room. Is, is fantastic and also the feeling of meeting fans like them coming to you talking about all the stuff it just gives you so much energy that i miss because every time i came back from an event like i was just i was going 100 miles an hour with videos and and ideas because they, they inspire us so much and then in real real life when they tell us you know the stuff that they like it, it just energizes you and gives you so much passion yeah. Um, so I miss it very much. Speak, speaking of that, so we had a, one of our questions from our, our Glimpse supporter was uh, from Opal Whisker. Actually mentioned the, the fact that they had heard that you'd watched the podcast and, and about the, the Minecon 2016. And we got a chance to tell our story. But now that you're here with us, why don't you tell us what yeah. the weekend was like for you? Okay, it all started with <laughs> a two-day drive from Washington to Los Angeles. So basically it was like adhered to my seat. Oh, wow. um, and getting there, I, getting there was an interesting experience because 
I'm a huge introvert. And especially being on Hermitcraft only a few months. And all of my time on YouTube was basically just me completely alone and getting in Hermitcraft in this huge community. And it was a that was a big experience for me, kind of getting outside of my shell. And then the other thing that um that happened during that, unfortunately, was with my neuromuscular disease, I get these things I call like muscle crashes where my body just gives up. So that whole time I was just kind of like <laughs> just barely getting by. So mm. I never got to hang out with you guys very much, which was such a bummer. But I was always like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Next year, next year, I'm going to be able to be more part of like all the stuff you guys are doing at your house and going out to eat and all that stuff. Um, because most of the time I was just in bed. Oh, man. <laughs> trying to rest. Um and then following following that, uh, we, we did the panel together. I got mm -hmm. caught in the elevator. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I met you, Skids. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, and never forget this. Like, we're going to get him out of here. We get some boys together. We're going to lift him out. <laughs> what, I said that? <laughs> yes. You're like, you said you were going to, we're going to get some guys together and we're going to lift you out of here. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about was right. That, yeah. Was that a different elevator? Uh, so it was like, there was that elevator that they had to get you like up onto the stage and mm -hmm. that's what malfunctioned. Right. And then we ended up having to like basically lift. So what, yeah, well, what happened was like you, you were ready to do it. And then my brother was like tinkering with it. And it turned out there was just like this little switch that got like askew uh -huh. and he just kind of like flipped it back and then went and it like jerked and me up you, to the top because I was locked in like halfway up and I was like, I was right. like trapped in it. Wow. Um, but I was just remember like, look at this nice guy. I, I look at this guy. <laughs> and now we're, now we're playing, playing live series together, which yeah. is awesome. With oh, all that, been great. with all that going on, I mean, uh, were you able to sign some autographs and sit at the, like the, the signing booth and get a chance to meet some, some viewers? Oh yeah. So I think it was after the panel, like everybody rushed the stage. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> we were able to now. sign. And then after that, um, there was some, we signed a little bit after, uh, the panel ended and then the next day when we went up to like that upper level and we, there was basically the, a long line of people that um you know came to each one of us and i think they were mainly there for mumbo he was at the end of the line <laughs> i think if we were at the beginning of the line it would be different. <laughs> you want to get to uh, mumbo you got to go through us <laughs> yeah yeah he but do you me. remember the first day of Minecon, so it was like considered like day zero when you just get your credentials before the event started and we had the meetup in front of the building yeah yeah, and Mumbo had like the NYP or not NYPD, but the LAPD like showed up and they were like, "I don't know what's going on here." And they stood on like flanking positions of Mumbo. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. one of them was on a Segway, which looks super awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mumbo is holding an enormous golden spoon that somebody gave him. It, it was yeah. just quite the sight to see. You yeah, got the police. Good. You got a man with a golden spoon. It was uh, just a huge crowd. It was such an experience. It was right. There, it was right in front of the building where the steps were. And then I remember it was like so. You had the convention center on one side, and then it's the big hotel to the other side, and this little like walkway in between that you could actually walk down and like cross the street into Disneyland, which was cool that it was right there. Um, and that crowd was so big that that walkway that people were trying to like get through, they couldn't. And so they, we had to like shift the crowd over to like make room. It was crazy. It was yeah, so cool. man, that was such a good experience. I, I miss it so much. And every time you hear that, you know, Minecon's delayed or canceled, it's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. It really, and, and yeah. the Minecon Mine in general, meeting all the great people and, and just the the energy back at the house and just making friends and yeah my my engagement with Scar was was limited but I remember getting this very my I made my like my decision on Scar really fast I was like I just I think I just crossed paths with one of the nicest people I've I've ever met in my life and it was just that was just how you came off to me you were just you were just so kind and just so nice and and I think I think I you were talking about the elevator thing that that. Does, that sounds like me because I, I tend to <laughs> I tend to get frustrated and I say this is what's gonna this is like failure's not an option this is what we're doing I, I tend to do so I just don't remember it that's a pretty cool story so did you guys meet for the first time at that MyCon or had we already done because remember Skiz uh, joined us for Hermit Quest was a series that we recorded way back when do you do you remember what happened I think it first? was after. It was after Minecon because I knew Skiz yeah, by happened. then because yeah. because okay. that was two, 2017 Minecon was sixteen yeah yeah, yeah. you knew Skiz from Minecon but did you really know Skiz <laughs> here because, we go <laughs> because I got a I got a a clip that I want to play for you because it's just the funniest thing ever More clip <laughs> yeah we were we were recording Hermit Quest and there was a moment where I think uh -oh. this this is when you actually met the real Skiz for the first time so listen to this. 
Uh, Lucas is in the, the king's thingy. There's no Lucas around here. A joke yeah, he's up in the in the king's office. Oh jeez. Yeah, I bet he is trying to get that promotion. <laughs> <laughs> where, are you, where are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys? I was right. I was right by you. Sorry, sorry. Sometimes I just say things. By the way, the um, the chests have been impulse. Where are you? By the way, I'm in the middle. Oh, thank God. Uh, I thought you were a baddie. Do you, do you want to? Oh we can my buy gosh! I forgot Lucas? about that. Wow. Happy's not busy. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh man. So, so. There we are recording, you know, like we're PG content creators and um, we don't typically cross too many lines there, but Skizzle Man kind of did and it took you by surprise and like, it was just really funny, like listening to Scar try to hold it together. He'll hold back that laugh. But he couldn't. <laughs> yeah. I definitely picked on, picked up on, there was a, this energy of, did he seriously just say that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that, that, I do remember that. That was very funny. <laughs> that was very funny. Yeah. If, if you listen, to get that promotion. If you, if you listen to the clip, like you, you, you were laughing under your breath, which, which could, you could hear, you could tell, but then you pulled it together and you tried to ask me a serious question. Like, you know, Hey, should we really go do this? And then, and I was like, yeah, if he's not busy. And then you kind of lost it all over again. <laughs> and it was just, yep, no, this is happening. And I, that's what I said. He's a promotion blocker. Yeah. Promotion blocker. That's <laughs> promotion what gotcha. blocker. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> Oh, that's great! That that was a fun series. That 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 was a. It's fun been a, one. it's been a while since we've done. I mean, obviously, we have the life series now, which is kind of mm -hmm. like a nice spinoff from just our typical content uh, for Hermitcraft, and so you got a lot more familiar with with Skizzle Man through that. Yeah. You know? So um, oh, I can't wait. I'm already the season just ended, and I'm already like seriously looking forward to the next life series. Oh yeah. I hope it I hope it comes sooner than later. Who knows what it's going to be? He always seems to pull something interesting out of yeah. the pocket. But um, yeah, I, I love the series. The series could get like one view and I think we would still do it. Oh, because sure. It's fun because we get together with not only like all of us like from Hermitcraft, but we also have other people outside of the Hermitcraft mm -hmm. bubble. That's really fun. Like when do we get to talk to Scott or, or Jimmy or Joel or any of those guys? Yeah. And so it is really fun to... Um, do something different like that. Yeah, it's such a fun crew. Yeah, it's such like Green, sort of like it's. It, I don't know how it how that cast happened, but it's almost like he handpicked uh, all the puzzle pieces to put together just the perfect picture. And it just it, it, it's everybody gets along with everybody. Yeah. It's great, and and it's funny because I was telling um, my my wife and I we watched them together. She she likes to watch those with me. Which oh, that's is awesome! Very very neat. And uh, and the scene came up where I was going to pull you away for your affirmation, and this was like a hot time of this of the season where every nobody could trust anybody no, and i said so i said scar you got to come with me buddy and he turns around to his crew and he goes guys skiz gonna kidnap me and i want to go because he's funny <laughs> <laughs> it <was> so funny <laughs> this is such like a genuine reaction to oh, man. <laughs> it's like you're luring me away with candy <laughs> <laughs> I know, get the van <laughs> so it just dawned on me because we jumped right in with scar that, oh, man. that we may actually have uh, listeners, viewers, uh, yes, not know yes. much about you. I, I, I'm sure it's yeah. not that prominent because you know you're you're pretty amazing and you know got over two million subscribers and stuff. So most people probably know who you are. But just in case, um, let's yeah. let's take a step back, if you will. Um, so obviously, I think you know everyone. I just mentioned it. You're a YouTuber. How did that all start for you? How did how did you get here? Like what what started your YouTube journey? Wow. Let's go back to the dark days of 2010 <laughs> <laughs> or even earlier. I mean, we yeah. could even go back earlier. It started basically, well, most people know, like I have a neuromuscular disease and that, that is like an extremely isolating thing. And one of the, the things that I did find that I was able to connect with people with was through online video games. Mm. And I might not have loved Call of Duty all that much, but I met a lot of friends through it. And in around like 2009 or so, they all started like saying like, oh, I'm thinking about doing YouTube and do mm. uploading their Call of Duty content. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm a mediocre Call of Duty player, but boy, does it look fun to upload and edit video and stuff. But at the time, like I, my voice was like, hello, everybody. <laughs> like it was, it was yeah. like, I didn't have much of a voice and I was just, just like very introvert, very scared to like branch out. 
And I watched them talk about like, oh, I'm going to do this thing called Justin TV, which eventually became Twitch. And somebody was like, yeah, I want to create, you know, clips and montages of the Call of Duty stuff and put it on there. And I just watched them kind of dabble a little bit. And eventually I, I started saving my money and I bought a, what was it called? Like a, an HDR, P, it was like a PVR, HDR, whatever it was. It was a, it was a box and it had the cords that hooked to the TV, it hooked to the console and could record mm. uh, footage. And I had a Mac, so then I had to buy some extra software. <laughs> and at that time, like that was all the money I had. And I was just doing a little bit of like data entry work. And I was like, man, this is everything I have. So I got to make something of this so I don't feel like I wasted my money wow. other than just taking VC, like, you know, tapes and recording them digitally with, <laughs> with that software and stuff. Um, so I didn't lose some of those tapes, but I eventually got it. I uploaded my first Call of Duty video and it got maybe like a hundred or a few hundred views, which I thought was actually pretty good. Oh, so yeah. this it is, is 2011. Good. Finally, finally kind of broke through there. But in that video, I was like, and we're going to do Minecraft and we're going to do Portal, all this stuff. Oh. And, and my voice is like, we are going to do Portal <laughs> game plays in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. Like if you go back, that is that is basically my voice. And, you know, I was doing some of the Call of Duty videos, but what I really loved doing was Minecraft. Like mm -hmm. Minecraft was what I wanted to do. But my friends who were also uploading some Call of Duty stuff were like, Psh. Come on, man. Anybody who upload, uploads Minecraft is just texture packs and mod reviews, and nobody cares about those. And I'm like, but I, I like to build. I don't really see a lot of builders on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And they were just basically just making fun of me the whole time and like, oh, kids, Minecraft, the whole thing. And so I, I did a little bit of both, and eventually my Minecraft videos started popping. They were getting like 20,000 views. Wow. And my Call of Duty videos were getting like 1,000. And I'm like, this, this, this is what I want to do, and people are liking it. And then I just kind of like dove headlong into it. And I would upload sporadically a Call of Duty video here or there just for fun of it because it was fun to do that with my friends. But um, it was the creative aspect of Minecraft. It was such a rewarding feeling to see that I'm creating these builds. People are enjoying them, giving me feedback, and I'm just having an absolute blast doing it. So wow. that's kind of like the, the early progression of it. And it was basically just to get, get an escape. At the end of the day, I just needed an escape because... In 2011 and in 2012, my health went way down. And I'm still like, the ramifications of those years are still like with me, but it allowed me to kind of escape from, you know, constantly being in the hospital, constantly going to the doctor, getting on playing Minecraft. And Minecraft back then was so, like, it was very like an alone experience. Like you're very alone mm -hmm. in Minecraft. It was very uh, isolating in, in its own weird way, but that was also very comforting to escape like the world and, and play Minecraft like that. Wow. And I started... My world, my first Minecraft video was starting a world called Scarland. Yep. Oh, my god. And the idea was that I would just make my own Disneyland. And obviously, in 2011, I am not even entirely sure we had birch wood. <laughs> I feel like it may Yeah, there was still multiple been types oak. of wood. All you had was oak, I'm sure. Yeah, and obviously, I was very limited. And my idea was that I'm going to centralize everything I build in one world. And that was Scarland. And yeah, it's... Uh, it was never anything that just popped off. It was always like this, just straight and steady. Mm -hmm. And I did, basically did my own thing until maybe like 2015. And I did a little modded series with one of my friends who used to play Call of Duty. Um, and then I joined um, like Iskol's server, Kingdom Craft. And then it closed down with them like a month of me joining. Oh, and then man. eventually that that led into uh, Hermitcraft. Yeah, you came in Hermitcraft. Uh, which season was it? Season, uh, season four. four, right? The yeah, four. Mesafied. Yeah. The Mesafied. Yeah. And uh, there was a, a couple other people from that server that you were on, right? That joined that same season at the same time? Or was it just you? Yeah. Um, I, bear, like, I only met Cub like for maybe 10 minutes on Kingdom Craft before Hermitcraft. Uh, so it was Cub and then the same with Iskol. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know Stress. She wasn't on the time that I did the group recording on Kingdom Craft, which we only did one of them. Um, and then Ren wasn't there either. He mm -hmm. was in South Africa. So a lot of those people like just joining Hermitcraft, like I kind of, I knew, I knew Wells, um, because he actually came from the, the modded series that we did. Mm. So I knew him from there, um, early on. And then, um, that was, yeah, that was basically just, I, well, getting into Hermitcraft was a whole experience that was like, yeah. it was a wild one. Yeah. That was crazy that we brought in so many people at the same time.
Yeah, that was the, yeah. The, probably the biggest addition to Hermitcraft we've ever had in the history of Hermitcraft. Where just you know, like five people at once welcome Hermitcraft. Yeah, that, big old that, that was that was a wild experience. I remember the first meeting, <laughs> and people were like, "Oh my gosh, the mace! It's so ugly!" Yeah. And you, you, people were putting down leaves and showing how ugly they were. And I was like, um, "I have an idea. Maybe we can make these." Um, scar pine trees and i remember i made one of the trees with birch leaves and yeah. I, maybe it was ether i can't remember somebody was like oh that's cool and i was like i contributed something <laughs> <laughs> yeah it probably was you i think we probably were about to shoot down the mesa idea and then scar's like how about we work together to make the mesa like a completely different biome and like re-terraform it completely yeah and then that then we had a like a, a hook for the season you know to, that, to all work together to like take this biome that's pretty ugly to be honest nobody would want to actually live there and then turn it into something that's like livable and beautiful and so exactly. yeah i think that was pretty much the catalyst for that season becoming the mesified season so you can uh put that feather that in is your cap. cool that's a cool yeah. story yeah very cool I'm back this tree i made a tree <laughs> over here guys <laughs> <laughs> so let, i want to let's dive into because you, you talked about how you started with call of duty and this mm -hmm. this question is from Lakshmi thirteen. Am I mm -hmm. saying that right? Lakshmi, I Lakshmi think. thirteen. We, we had to work that out. Yep. Uh, they, they're <laughs> literally they're literally pointing out in this question that they cannot imagine a world without Scarland, right? So that so uh -huh. obviously that res that that whole idea resonated with people. But what they're asking is, do you, you know Minecraft is what boosted you? Minecraft is, is what they're pointing out. And you just you kind of told that story. Minecraft is what made mm -hmm. you internet famous, as as they're putting it. Is there any part of you and you, that kind of wishes it was a different game that that got you famous you obviously have a, a passion for minecraft but is there is you wish it was see like you're you're all in for there it is yeah. no i'm yeah. all i'm all in for minecraft and nice. it i mean look at look at the like the landscape of games out there look at how many of them just popped off and you're like whoa look at those views and the creators that ride that wave all the way to the top where we're just always like this because uh, yeah. we, we create uh, like up. minecraft's timeless and what we create is timeless and even Hermitcraft, for for an instance, is is like timeless content that just people just enjoy. It's it's not it's not edgy. It's not um, like these one off things. It's this timeless content, and that's the same with Minecraft. Like, I don't know. I, I would never wanted to be a part of any of those other waves because a lot of times it maybe was just something gimmicky or just some game that's going to come in and come out. Like this is a game that's going to be with us, I think, for the rest of our lives. And we're going to continue to play this game. It'll continue to evolve, hopefully in good ways. But I could never imagine being a part of any other community either. You know, yeah. Minecraft has, you know, it's ups and downs here or there. But for the most part, it's the most solid, like, community out there. Like, compare it to, like, oh, yeah. other, like, games out there. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah never stuff comes and goes. Like, like, we actually lost a couple of Hermitcraft members because they jumped on, like, the Ark Survival wave, mm -hmm. right? And uh, never made it back. So... And that game came and it's it's still I'm sure it's still going, but not not like Minecraft is thri thriving. I hope you're right. I mean, I hope that, you know, 20, 30 years from now, Minecraft is still thriving the way it is, because uh, I wouldn't mind being, you know, a 70 year old creator <laughs> and still going. Even even if like YouTube is not even a thing, Minecraft's not something I'll ever give up because Minecraft is well, I've, I've said this from the very beginning. Minecraft to me is like a 3D CAD program that I can like take the ideas out of my head and put them in the game. Mm. You know, it's it's a fun game. I enjoy the aspects of the game. But the number one thing I like about Minecraft is I take the ideas out and I put them into a world. And like I've always been into art, painting, drawing, and I've never been super great at either. Um, but Minecraft's the one thing where I can pull those out and make something I'm like, that's what I'm proud of. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really nice to have a creative <clears throat> outlet. Mm -hmm. I mean... For me, when I got into Minecraft, I was just because I was more engineered mind. I wasn't like having these pictures in my head. I just wanted to see mm -hmm. how pieces fit together and, and what I could do there. Um, so I started with a redstone. And then as I started like being inspired by people like Scar and just seeing what they're able to do with blocks and just make art in the game, I was like, I think I want to try to learn how to build better. And so it, it, like it, it's just fun with Minecraft, like how you can see what other people are doing, see how they all play the game like differently and then just like mm -hmm. pick up inspiration from there. And that's what I really love about it. It's a, it's the same for me with Redstone. Like I, I, I see what you guys can do with Redstone and, and like, <laughs> like I can think like, Oh, I can make my, my builds actually more alive or, you know, and, and I think there's like a, a, a beautiful thing of like a technical Redstoner and a builder like coming together and making something really unique with their, both their strengths. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. Hermitcraft is absolute best when that like, 
that comes together. And we don't do it enough, to be honest. No. You know, like, like we're all still kind of, kind of like, yeah, <laughs> oh, a little spoiler for maybe something that might happen in season 10. We'll see if we can uh, get more ideas like that flowing. <laughs> um, that'd be great. Okay, I'm going to rewind just a little bit because we did have a question, a more of an origin story question um, mm-hmm. from Albie Amy. Where did the name Scar come from? Or Good Times with Scar, the full name. Let's hear about the whole story here. You remember back in those days <laughs> before streaming? And you saw that television show one time on NBC. Well, it goes back to my brother and I playing Call of Duty and uh, The Office. And Michael Scott had his fake persona. Like I don't even remember exactly what the real name was. I thought it was Michael Scar. Or like, and my brother thought it was like Michael Schoon was his like 007 name. <clears throat> it's scarring. Because there, we, we couldn't rewatch it. We just had to go off of our, our memory. And so <laughs> I I created my username as uh, Scar. And then my brother created it as, as Schoon. So I think I was Agent Scar and he was Agent Schoon. And then we both like looked at each other and we're like, do we just create like the same thing, but we both misinterpreted the name? Like who's actually right here? Uh <laughs> <laughs> so we're over there playing Call of Duty 4, and we've, we've got these goofy names. And like in, in those games, you could have like a clan, like you're, 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 you're like group together. And then like my, my genius brain, I'm like, we're going to be WED for Walter Elias Disney Enterprises, which was the um, company that, well, it's imaginary now, but in the past when Disney was being built, that's what it was called. Those were the guys who built the parks. They, they worked for WED Enterprises. And so our name was Wed Agent Scar and Wed Agent Scoon. Oh. It's the most like cringy, <laughs> awful names. And uh. I was like, why did you stick us with this W-E-D? Now we're just Wed? What does that mean? Um, <laughs> that is the awful origin story um, of my name. And I, it's just kind of stuck because over time, I just continue to also accumulate scars. And it, it very mm. much does fit. Um, a lot of people think it's like my trach scar and, you know, it, it's all just kind of part of the, the persona, I guess, at this point. But that that's the actual origin story of um, of my name. That's was, amazing. So you're saying if you heard <clears throat> this right, your name actually would have ended up being Good Times with Scott? Because it, it was supposed to be from the office? Well, no, no. He's talking about the name is Scarn. Scarn. It's S-C-A-R-N. I thought his name on the office was... It's it's Scott on the office. But what he's referring to is an alt like like a character that he creates called Agent Scarn. Oh, okay. I missed the office. So he wrote he writes a play called Threat Level Midnight. And the main character is Agent Scarn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was it was his an alias of Okay. Yeah. Got it. If things were going bad, I would shout. <laughs> wait, wait you, the mic cut out. I want to know what you just said. I, I would I would shout if things were going bad and my brother would know what to do when I would say threat level midnight. Oh, see, and we, would, we would switch up our gameplay and stuff. Um, <laughs> threat level oh, midnight. I miss those days. Now he's, you know, out there, you know, traveling the world, big business guy. I never hear from him. But boy, those were fun days when we were uh, when we were uh, playing Call of Duty together back in the day. Do you ever, and if I you didn't ever have that, like... What? You ever go back to playing, uh, picking up Call of Duty and playing from time to time? Like, since you've taken I, off with Minecraft, do you ever just take the time to, like, go I, back I, and revisit? I, I'll admit that I have played every single Battlefield and every single Call of Duty. Nice. And I might I might play them for one minute, or I might, I might put 20, 50, 100 hours into it. Yeah, it just depends man. if it's a good game or not. But I have set foot in every Battlefield game ever made and every Call of Duty game ever made. That's awesome. See, Impulse and I go back to Battlefield 2, and yeah. we've, we've talked about mm-hmm. this in a podcast uh, where the, the ch- our chopper game was just the sickest. Oh, I missed the vehicles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and so he was an incredible pilot, and I was I was the gunner. And and we got into a point to where when we would join servers and people would see so-and-so join, they would just go blow up the choppers, which is me- <laughs> it felt amazing, right? Yeah. But then Battlefield 3 came out and I just I couldn't latch on. I just mm. couldn't do it. The game started to change like too much to to just be like hyper, like super hyper instead of like strategy focused, which is where we like. And it's to gotten live. more like that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it got it got, I don't know if complicated, like it's it wasn't that it was complicated, it's that it got um uh, uh what's the word I'm it, it got complicated with no value. And what I mean by that was you, oh, you can get a certain grip for that gun. Oh, there's a better yeah. grip that, but that second grip doesn't really work unless you have this scope. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's when you started to like customize <laughs> yeah. every screw that yeah, held the gun together. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, that, that was a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, you saw what Call of Duty is like, you, your mind would melt. Like the amount of attachments like that, it, it's like yeah. you you basically could have about thirty different sites. 
Wow. Yeah. And to me, there there is a there is a there is a point when these games start to diminish themselves. And I always say for for Minecraft or even for Call of Duty, both these games are really easy to get into and they're very difficult to master. Mm -hmm. And difficult to master is how you keep the person in the game. And these games, the the bar to entry is starting to get higher and higher, even for Minecraft to a certain extent. Mm. Um, like people yeah. are confused, like where do I get diamonds now? I'm I'm, I'm in this deep stuff. I don't know what this is. Um, you know, that's great for like us, but you know, for new players, that that bar is starting to raise a little bit. Yeah, I can see how that's an interesting parallel. Definitely. Yeah. Man, I could t I feel like I could just talk about games all day too. But I'm with <laughs> you. Like it got to a point where they add so much that I find myself in a space of analysis paralysis where I'm like, there's so mm. many choices to be made. I'm like, I can't even, what, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and so, but, but back in battlefield two, it had such charm. There yeah. were four different loadouts and it, four times. different roles. Yeah. Yeah. Simpler <laughs> times. And we just, oh, I just, I could, uh, to this, to yeah. this day, I could play. We got to get back into this. Yeah. I would love to, I would love to, if it was still, you know, relevant, I'd love to pick it up and, and, and play like old school battlefield two and just yeah. to see if we could still do it. I don't, you know, I probably have, I had a, I kitted myself out with like the actual like joystick and throttle for it to it seem all. like I was oh, flying wow. a real helicopter. That's awesome. And so my entire desk was just covered with gear. I yeah. bet you anything I still have it because I'm a I'm a hoarder. So I probably have it somewhere. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my my friend was very, very good. We we also got into, I think it was in Battlefield 4, he got very good at flying. And I was getting good at the gunner. And yeah, we would rack up, you know, those 50 kills and people would get, send you the messages. Yeah. I feel like if you don't receive a message at the end of a game, you did something wrong. You didn't perform <laughs> your best. There you go. There you I, always, I always say when I get those messages, I'm like, <clears throat> I appreciate your five star review on my performance. <laughs> That's, it That's awesome. I man. love it. So, Scar, you uh, you obviously have made a huge impact. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of people know who you are. You have a, a you just you talked about a second ago over two yeah. million followers and or uh, on our Congrats, subscribers. Man, that's awesome. It's a huge deal. Right. But you found a way to take this energy and take this uh, sphere of influence that you're the center of and make great things happen with it. And I want to talk a little bit about the charity work that you've been doing and um, more specifically <clears throat> the, the outreach. Right. The, gamers, uh, the outreach gamers outreach. Was the, the go karts. Yeah. Yeah. Those go karts. When I saw that, I, I you tweeted this out the other day and uh, it was, you know, I'm going to give you the mic in a second here because I want you to take us through the whole journey. But I just mm -hmm. want to talk about my experience looking at that picture. And there you are sitting in front of those go-karts. And I remember, and I, I, I had to, I had to quote, I had to retweet it and I had to think about what I was going to say, because I'm like, this is, this is such pure good. I don't know if I can find the right words. I found myself showing my wife, the picture. I found myself showing my parents, the picture. I'm like, these are the types of people that I'm, I'm, I'm getting to like play with now. Like, look what this dude did. Look what he spearheaded. So Take us through that entire journey of that outreach program. Oh, wow. We, so the, <laughs> I've wanted to do some form of charity thing with Hermitcraft forever. And if someone doesn't just, just take the ball and roll, like we, we <laughs> love to talk about things in yeah. Hermitcraft meetings, all the things we could write books about, we've talked about, <laughs> but we've, we've never like committed to like a charity thing. And finally it snapped. I'm just like, we're doing this. We, we can do this. And it goes way back to Minecon. And if you remember at Minecon, they announced shulkers, the end re renovation, llamas and all of that. But when, when I was going down to that that hall where they were going to announce those things, Jeb was on the stage. It was super exciting. But there was a another panel going on at the same time. And it was a brand new charity called Gamers Outreach. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And it was like, oh, they, they bring video games to the hospital. And I went over there <laughs> and I listened to them talk and I'm like, this is really, really cool. And I, I talked to the founder for a moment there and he said he was going to TwitchCon, which I was going to TwitchCon to do a panel on uh, disabilities while streaming there. And at that event, I was able to um, talk with them and they showed me the cart and I'm like, I'm going to do some kind of event around this. This is 2016. Fast forward all the way to 2022. I After we decided this was the charity we were going to do. Um, I messaged them and he was like, I remember you. This is amazing. We're full circle back to it. But what it came to was, you know, we, we looked at a lot of different charities and a lot of different ways of doing these charity events. And I wanted something that I feel like with a charity event, one person at least then has to have like a, a connection to it. So whatever we do then in the future, like I feel like it's really good to have somebody with like a connection. And this had the connection to me in that when you're in a hospital, you're incredibly isolated. And I know this is probably not the perfect analogy. It might not be right in any way, but there there is a parallel to almost feeling like in jail in a way. Mm -hmm. you, you're you're, you're mm -hmm. in a room, you're locked in, you can't leave. 
you 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 stare at the wall and bringing in some kind of entertainment, especially to kids who are scared, who don't quite understand fully what's going on, and bringing in some kind of familiarity of like Minecraft or some other game to them to play can can get them out of like a cycle of of pain, a cycle of 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 you know just being incredibly down from being in the hospital. And seeing something familiar like that has it brings kids like a huge amount of joy. That also can can parallel to to maybe them not needing as much pain medicine or any other kind of <clears throat> medicines that they might have to like calm down and stuff like that. And one thing I also I, I wanted to bring with this charity too was something that you could see. You know, if, if you're if you're a viewer and you you see you know you're raising money for something. I really think it's important to show that that person's money went to something instead of just a just a giant black hole or some enormous charity, you know, trip to the Bahamas or something. And so mm -hmm. I was very careful to make sure that this charity was going to be a good steward of the money that our community raised. And now, like at this point, right, we, we can show the audience, too, that these these, these are real things. These are mm -hmm. in hospitals like kids are, are, are holding these controllers and, you know, maybe they're just getting a few minute break from, you know, being in the hospital, like waiting for a surgery, waiting for a procedure or, or something like that. Um, so to me, I, I, I can feel what it feels like to be those kids in the hospital and how much it would have been amazing to be able to like play a game or have something familiar from home. And luckily with the charity, a lot of people resonated with it. A lot of people in the hospital like, oh, I wish I had that as a kid or, or something mm -hmm. like that. It was really cool to see. And a lot of people had a lot of stories about being in the hospital and stuff like that, which was really nice. And yeah, I don't know. That, that's, 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 that's basically awesome. how it went. It's awesome. But it, it, it took the entire group, right? Because we, we put on like a, quite a show. Yeah. I mean, everybody pitched in to build, build the contraptions, <laughs> to stream. We had the goofy chairs, which were built at three in the morning that, <laughs> that night, Tango and Cub. Like we, uh, we put those together and I think it was the most hermit craft thing that we could possibly make that felt, that felt very organic and very, very natural. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of charity stuff can sometimes be a little bit unorganic and I don't think there's like a good connection with the audience. I think this was done in a good way that it really felt Permit craft. It, it felt like the audience got to watch something fun, but also got to contribute to help a fund. Yeah, it was great. So. There was like this like nice build up to it because we got some content out of it as well. As, as mm -hmm. far as like we are getting ready to do this uh, event where we want to play mini games, and so uh, we use that as a way to generate some content. So they got a chance to see us build up these games, and that was like kind of building anticipation to this event where they were yep. going to see us play all the different games, all the different hermits built. There was that. Could you have ever imagined, though, that we were going to raise, what was the ending number? Like $424,000 or something crazy? Oh, just shy of $450,000. Oh, my gosh. Wow. We didn't know how to turn it off, and people kept <laughs> donating. Wow. <laughs> people kept donating. And a few interesting tidbits here. Uh, Tiltify, which we use as the the way you, you donate, that's how it like, aggregates the money and then gives it to the charity. We crashed their systems three times. <laughs> And their CEO is like calling up gamers outreach and I'm like, what is going on? Like our systems have gone down. And this is something really nice that gamers outreach mentioned is that the biggest donation was like $3,000. So it was all small. Do it was small dollar. It's big in the terms of like the audience who donated it. But what I mean is it wasn't yeah. a corporate donation of like $100,000. Right, right, right. That was our community who funded those things. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think so that, that, that makes me very happy that like our community did that and a lot of these big groups they were like you know like this this person gave them 50 this place gave 100 your audience is who'd funded this yeah and i can't tell you how much gamers outreach like just loves our community like our audience went into their older videos and left a lot of nice comments and the ceo's like they left these wholesome comments it just warmed my heart yeah yeah and it, it was really cool because we kind of showed them like this is a really great community, you know, that they didn't even know about. And now like they love it and they love being part of our community now. And it's uh, it was such a fun event. Definitely like a highlight, I think, to to what we've done. And because of that, um, they were able to to build like how many carts total did they end up funding through this? We're at this? around 110 That's right now. I think. Wow. And, and, and it's not just like in the U.S. You were able to also work with them to get these distributed like worldwide. So we're hitting yes. as many places of the, the entire world as possible, which is awesome. Yeah, that was the thing. It, it has to be worldwide. It has to you have to be able to show the, the, the viewer that their money went to something 
and, you know, like a good connection. And that's kind of like how I look at it, like a good charity event. And um, we, we have it representing all the places that hermits live. And so every wherever a hermit lives, there, there should be a cart within their vicinity. And that means for around the world. And what's nice, too, is now Gamers Outreach has connections into Europe. And they didn't have that before. Wow. So they, they're very, like, thankful for that. Um, now they have these connections. And it took a little while because, like, <laughs> European countries like, is this a scam? Like, uh, uh. But, you know, <laughs> after a lot of work, like, no, they're all in. And they're very excited to get their carts, which should be getting there very soon. That is awesome. That yeah, is I know cool. um, there's a couple hospitals near where I live that got carts delivered, but I guess they're still mm -hmm. kind of like under uh, the pandemic policies to where we can't just yeah. go like visit and 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 see the carts ourselves and take pictures with with uh, some of the the people using them. But uh, very cool. Very to know. restrictive still. Yeah. Which the 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 when I visited the one by me, that was the first gamers outreach um, hospital like that has reached out to them. So hopefully over the next few months, like more hospitals will reach out. One in Europe is already ready for once they receive the carts to have a visit from the European hermits, which will be really cool. Yeah. All right, we're going to switch gears just a little bit. Um, such cool work, though. So congratulations on setting up that event and spearheading it. You, he, he, he was such. You, we talk about you know leaders in hermitcraft, and Scar is a shining example of a leader because he led that entire fundraising campaign. So um, thank you for that. Uh, it was an amazing experience to be part of and uh, just seeing your leadership and, and how much work you put into that was uh, very inspiring. So, um, but I yeah, shifting that. subjects just a little bit. Um, you did talk about your disability. Uh, I had a question from Acid Phoenix and the question is, um, as far as being disabled, how has it affected your career as a content creator? What kind of struggles have you had to overcome because of it? Consistency that is probably the number one. I have killed my channel more than any other YouTuber. And, you know, in, in, in YouTube, the number one thing you got to remember is, is being consistent. Mm -hmm. That could be every day. That could be every week or every month. But having that all intermittent is like the kiss of death. Mm -hmm. But I've always been very fortunate to have a community that I think is very understanding of like my situation. So knows that if I disappear for a month, two months or something like that, it's not me just being lazy. That's me, you know, having, you know, a medical issue. And they know that, yeah, I'll stick around. I know he'll be back. It's it's when I first started YouTube, I did not mention that I was disabled for a very long time. And it wasn't until that 2012 that my disability had taken over so much of my life that I couldn't really like hide it anymore. It's not so much that I was like hiding it, but it was that I was... I don't know. I, I this was my like happy place, and I just didn't want it to be a part of it. But then I realized me being open about it like helps people understand me more and can show other people that you know if they're disabled, they they can also do this. And that's been probably the thing that's made me the happiest through um, a lot of content is being able to inspire people who, who've you know have disabilities that got into content creation. Mm -hmm. That's why I've done like four or five of these panels at TwitchCon um, to try to inspire people with disabilities, but. The number one thing that's a challenge is is energy and consistency. And, you know, it's like I have a lot of things that are not quite that don't really work that well. Mm -hmm. And I, I drag pretty hard, but I, I try to, you know, just kind of keep going because I know what it's like to just kind of sit there and stare at the wall. And I know what it's like to have like, you know, a passion, something to do. So I, I try to keep that alive as much as possible. Uh, because th this this is very dark and being isolated and not having a path, not having goals in life, all of that. And then there's this over here that I've been very fortunate and very lucky to be a part of. And I try I try as hard I can to keep that like going as as much as I can and to open up new possibilities and stuff like that. But um, yeah, the challenge is, is energy and consistency is the is the biggest challenges I have. Yeah, and you mentioned like having those breaks can potentially kill a YouTube channel to the point to where I, I know that content creators had big, big discussions in the past about how mm -hmm. like YouTube would almost punish you for taking a break. And I don't know if there was any truth to that or if it was more of just like an out of sight, out of mind type of thing with the viewers, right? Like if you're gone yeah. for a couple months, they forget how much they loved your content when you do come back or, yeah. or have given up, you know, and moved on with their lives. So um, that, that obviously must be a big challenge. Like, do you feel pressure? Like when you have those breaks to come back with some sort of like bang in order to, to like re get them to remember who you're, what you're about, you know, there's always a big video when I come back <laughs> and hence, hence this week I finished my castle. Mm -hmm. Um, 
yeah, th- there there is that pressure. There's also the the pressure in that like I haven't taken a break in three years. The only time I've taken a, a break away from YouTube is to deal with like a health thing, and then I'm right back into it. Mm-hmm. And I think over time that has also like kind of eroded like my creativity because I found that especially recently that I can push through any physical issues. I, I've done some pretty insane like videos while dealing with like health things. Like I'm on I'm on I'm heading to the emergency room. And I'm like, just one second, we're at 90%. Uh, we're ninety percent on the video up front. <laughs> but if it's if it's something maybe it, it, it more like you know mental health wise, that's it. It's gone. Like creativity is is it's gone. It, it's just like a little spark that just disappears. And so in the last few weeks, I've been I've been really starting to like try to like get my like mental health back in line and stuff like that. It's been a huge thing that I've been trying to work on because the last three years have been kind of rough, and it's just been like one thing after another living in these like four walls, like isolated during the pandemic. Um, so that's, that's been one of the other challenges is like isolation and isolation means that you're not experiencing things, which then in turn inspires you to make things like going to the, the Christmas tree lot. Oh, I'll make a Christmas tree, custom Christmas tree lot in Hermitcraft and all those things that I haven't been doing. It feels like my creativity has been like slowly like dwindling. So that's mm-hmm. another side effect of like being disabled and having to be isolated is that creativity starts diminishing, at least for me, when I'm not out experiencing things. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you need those catalysts, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, let me let me segue that into another question because your your insight on what it is to, uh, I mean, obviously we are all very well aware, and I I'm hopeful you are too. You are you are so much more than a disabled creator. You're an uh, you're an amazing creator who happens to be disabled. But mm-hmm. it does it does offer a, a different set of optics on on what that experience is like that is going to be pretty foreign to a lot of people, right? It, it's kind of weird, and 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 this is not. I mean, this is just so I'm very. I can't let me be as clear as possible. This is obviously not the same thing. It's not even close to the same thing. But the limited amount of experience that I have with that is when we had to I had to come clean because you and I were pretty consistent in our releases, and I had to come clean that I had a huge relapse because I, I was I have MS and I was. I had a huge relapse and it took me out of the game for a little bit. And that mm. was weird. And I remember being like, why was I keeping it so secret? You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know what that was. I, but it just, I, I don't know. I don't. And so to hear that you did that too, to begin with, that must've been a pretty, pretty big day when you just sort of kind of put it all out on the table there. Yeah, it was, I remember I made a video about it. It was after being in the hospital for about a month. Um, so what happened was I've been, my nutrition has always been kind of up and down feeding tubes, pick lines, TPN, um, and so I, my, I had gotten down to like 115 pounds Jeez. and I was still making videos, but I was 115 pounds and, um, and I'm like, I'm like six foot something. So, you know, that's not super healthy. And I was in the hospital for a month of them doing surgery, putting in a tube that didn't work, doing another surgery, doing this and that. And then eventually putting on TPN, which is, you know, they put a pick line and thread it up your shoulder and then you get nutrition via basically IV. Um, and once that that happened, I was like stable. I finally made my video and I'm like, hey, you know, I do deal with these challenges and these challenges mean that sometimes I might be gone, but don't take that as that I'm just done or I'm lazy or anything. It means that I'm still passionate. I'm just out of the game for a little bit. Yeah. And by doing that, it changed the dynamic of my channel because now people like understand me more, connect to me more and know that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not just I'll, I'll be back is, is basically what, what I wanted from that. And the audience has always been incredibly supportive um, of that. And I think, yeah, I think it's important to be open to the audience about those things. It doesn't mean you have to go to every single detail and imaginable, but right. just to have that like little connection and it definitely inspires other people. There you go. That's, that's other exactly people will right. See yeah. It, yeah. yeah you're they'll, having... they'll see that and they'll be like, I, 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 I'm going through something very, very similar. Yeah. And now I, I can see this person doing this and accomplishing that. And it's like, why can't I do that? Right. I've always said like a, a person with a disability or, you know, a chronic medical condition lives their life on hard mode hmm. and there's going to be obstacles that are a little bit higher up, but there's always ways to sneak around under the obstacle, <laughs> over the obstacle. It just takes a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of like open mindedness that you can do something because it is so easy to just put blinders on to isolate yourself but if you just try to be a little bit open to there actually being possibilities, it will make your life as a disabled person much, much better. 
Uh, at least I found that. It's yeah. good. And it sounds like you've also got a pretty nice support system, right, with your parents and your brother yeah. and, and obviously an amazing community behind you as well. So I'm sure that helps quite a bit. I, could, I, I would not be sitting here if it wasn't for my parents. Like the amount of times that my mom has caught an issue or my dad has like argued with somebody on the phone, <laughs> like I would never, I would not be alive. I would not be sitting here if it wasn't for them. One supporting like me doing this goofy YouTube thing, using every <laughs> penny that I had saved on the, on the HDR and the software to make <laughs> this happen to my mom, like catching them, giving me antibiotics that I'm like deadly allergic to in the hospital. Like, yeah, uh, everything goes to, to my parents. That must be, um, really cool for for them to see what you've what you've done with this with this platform and and how far you've come i mean can you share any uh, any any of that uh, have, do they are they open with you about like how proud they must be of all this yeah it, it, yeah like yeah they, they've like my dad's always very quiet about that but sometimes it's like really cool just <laughs> really proud you're know, like it's always like very so yeah. like yeah it's always funny because i i i think they are like yeah like the, it's and it, it's it's allowed me to do things to to help them too, which has been been good. And I remember the the time bringing my brother to a mind fair in L.A., and he's just like, "This this is just crazy." <laughs> like he's just looking at me and like everything going on. To and then, <laughs> and a fun like side story on that. Like sometimes like kids just want an autograph from a YouTuber, and they 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 would get one from me because I was in a booth, you know, to sign, and my brother would be sitting next to me. And then they would bring over to him and be like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> and you can probably imagine by the end of the event, he's signing and he's signing kids' shirts and he is just loving it. And so these kids out there have like my brother's signature on him. Never really done YouTube outside of being in a few of my videos, but uh, I always awesome. think how funny that was. And I'm like, man, you've come a long ways to now sign the back of kids' shirts. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so good. So that's kind of a good... Uh, lead into an, another question here that uh, talk about your the support system you have this is from Lakshmi 13 again is quite literally asking like what kind of advice do you have for a parent who has a child with disabilities and what what are some things that your parents did that that these these parents could emulate that's a great question um well the number one thing is to just wow that's a great question the number one thing is to fully understand your capabilities and limitations to understand like where your barrier is, mm -hmm. where, you, where, where you, you can't go so you can fill in the space in between that. So if you're like, I can go up to here and what can I do in that space? That's how at least one way that I, I do look at things. And also to never, to never get into that point of thinking that things are never possible because I've gotten into that position again. I was not in that position until recently after these three years have messed with me tremendously and i i did get in a, a spot where where i did start like oh i can't do this i can't do that so i think the number one thing to do is to make sure your kid understands that things are possible there are ways around them and that's that's the number one thing is like to understand your limitations understand how you could potentially get around them and also just owning your disability is one of the most important mm -hmm. things in my mind is that I'm disabled and that's who I am. I'm in a chair that that's that I have to use this to get around. I have to use oxygen at times to, to breathe better. I have to use my feeding tube. So I don't, so I'm not 115 pounds again. And those are my things and you can't attack those things or use them against me. And, and in content creation, you know, a lot of people might pick on me. They've, you know, people have said a lot of negative things in the past or, or still, but my mobs are great. So I rarely <laughs> if ever see anything like that. You know, people are always like, oh, I like to take your oxygen and hang you with it. You know, things like Peace. that. That doesn't bother me. This is this is this is what I use. This is me. Like mm -hmm. you, you can't attack what I own. And that yeah. I, like I owe myself my own disability. And I tell people, especially with especially when new new people are getting into Twitch and people are poking at the things that they think are gonna be vulnerable to that person. And I'm like, you own that. You are that person. You can't attack what you own. And that I, I am this person, I own it. You can't attack them. That's my shield. Wow. And I, I, I see it so often where, where the trolls out there want to pick at those little yeah. things that they think they'll get you at, especially if you're disabled, if, you know, maybe something's slightly visual and they, they want to poke at that. You're like, no, this is who I am. This is, you can't touch that. You yeah. can't. You can criticize my bill. I'll probably take that pretty personally. <laughs> yeah. you, you, yeah. can't, you can't. You can't get me on that. Um, so I don't know. It, it's tough. I, I think just supporting uh, your child as much as possible 
and finding every way around those limitations. And believe me, there are so many things. If, if your kid wants to go skiing, there's ways your kid could go skiing. If there is, you wanna to go to Disneyland, Disneyland is very accessible. Like, so, so there's things that you think, oh, I could never do that. But if you, if, if you just keep that open mind, there are possibilities. That's just amazing. just open mindedness is the number one thing That's with great that. Great advice. You you had a uh, like an off road chair that was uh, built for you, right? That that you've done some vlogs on. Yes, I always plan on doing another one. I need to do one this this year. <laughs> yes. So Zach at a Jerry Rig Everything's channel and his wife have made uh, like an off road wheelchair, uh -huh. and they're doing all sorts of incredible things now, like custom wheelchairs, which just blow my mind because. I firsthand, especially over this last year, know the horrors of like how bad wheelchairs and insurance companies work, especially in the last two years. Mm. Um, so yeah, like he is, him and his wife are so inspiring that they are taking what they've done on YouTube and leveraging that to like help people. That's awesome. I, th those two inspire me so <laughs> much. And I love my off-road wheelchair. Like it gets me outside. It gets me places that I've never been before. And that's what I always say. Never get into the point where you think things are, are completely impossible. There's always ways around it. And you're never perfect. You're, you're never going to feel that way all the time. Like I said, I've gotten pretty down in the last few years where I feel like nothing is possible. But that'll happen it's, it's not yeah. not something to feel like that's forever or you're stuck there you just kind of have to lift yourself up and see that things are possible again so never think when somebody's like i'm happy and great all the time that's never true yeah that's never true we, right. there are there's <laughs> ups and downs we all feel that but those down feelings are never forever feelings yeah that, that's that's profound that is uh wow yeah. uh so i gotta be honest with you scar we have probably twice as many questions to ask still that we as we've already asked uh, so we're like halfway through our list of questions so um we could wrap like a part one yeah up we'll wrap right this now up, give you a little one. break and then yeah. uh if you got more time we'd be happy to have i've you. got all the time in the world oh Excellent. my goodness okay let's do that let's so wrap much more this to talk up about. then um yeah. and then we'll we'll yeah re-energize get some water all that kind of stuff and then uh we'll we'll come back and finish off the list if you, if you, oh, if I'm you having fun. It. I'm going to keep you guys here so long. I'm going to pull that Murphy bed down and fall asleep. <laughs> there, you go. Talking, there you go. Talking. There, there was a limitation on the questions that we were accepting. Um, I think it was uh, no Disney questions, no Star Wars <laughs> questions, and no. Look, 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 he's oh, no. He's <laughs> holding up a lightsaber. I'm just over here pulling out my lightsaber. Oh, and there was no Disney <laughs> because oh, then it would be gosh. part three, part four, part five. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of people that would actually. I want to ask some Star Wars questions. You, are, oh, you, you will want to ask what I wanted to do as a career at some point. That's 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 a question that's, that's on the list. Okay, that's actually good, that's good, actually good. what's coming up next. So yeah. there's a little teaser in for part two. For part explore. two <laughs> next week, uh, we'll we'll record it right after the break, and then they'll have to wait another week for it. But uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll continue here in a bit. Yeah, this has been a blast. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.